Good morning and welcome to the 11 o'clock Mass. Today's Mass celebrates the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and our celebrant this morning is Father Kevin, assisted by Father Peter. Please stand and join in our entrance hymn, number 444, Blessed Be the Lord, number 444. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not fear the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. He will release me from the nets of all my foes. He will protect me from their wicked hands. Beneath the shadow of his wings I will rejoice to find a dwelling place secure. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not fear the dark of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. With your spirit. Good morning. This morning we celebrate the 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And this Mass is being offered for Loretta Cosette. My brothers and sisters, but before we start further, I'd like to introduce Father Peter Meingi from the Archdiocese of Neri, Kenya. Father Peter is the rector at Christ the King Major Seminary in Nairi, Kenya, which Nairi is, central, is in the central highlands of Kenya. I have a great fondness for those that work, rectors, faculties at seminaries across the world to form mostly young men, but in some instances not so young men, to be ready to become a priest of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's such a blessing because not only is it a blessing for Africa, the diocese within Africa, uh, to uh, receive these new priests, newly minted ordained priests, but also it benefits the rest of the world. As a matter of fact, here in the Archdiocese of Boston, I was looking yesterday at the um, monthly uh, bulletin a mailing from the Archdiocese of Boston. And I look at the m monthly one because it shows you the comings and goings of the various priests. I'm sort of out in the outer limits. I don't, I'm not part of that grapevine to know where, where everybody is going. But I always take a look to see who's coming and who's going. And I found out that there were two priests from the Diocese of Rwanda that have now become, that just started as chaplains at St. Elizabeth's Hospital for Women. I knew a Anthony, Father Anthony Mecca, who uh, <clears throat> was here last year for the propagation of faith. He is a chaplain at South Shore Hospital where I worked for the past four years before becoming, coming back into parish ministry. So it's, it's so important because these priests are helping to be present for those in the hospital that are sick and dying, to give them the sacraments of not only sacrament of the sick, but also the Eucharist, communion, and to give them comfort and solace. So it's a wonderful and it's a great pleasure for Father Peter to be here with us on behalf of the propagation of faith. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contract of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. 
Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, a Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grave that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on farther toward Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew near and said, will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there are 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it? for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it. Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of the world act with justice? The Lord replied, if I find 50 innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke again. Seeing how I am presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes, what if there are five less than 50 innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But Abraham persisted, saying, what if only 40 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the 40. Then Abraham said, let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only 30 are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but 30 there. Still Abraham went on. Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. But still he persisted. Please let my Lord not grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least 10 there? He replied, for the sake of those 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me.
presence of the angels I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great above all things your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk amid distress, you preserve me. Against the anger of my enemies, you raise your hand. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, on the day I called for help, you answered me. A reading from a letter, the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in, you, in which you were also raised with him through the faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions and uncircumcisions of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross, the word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, 
friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived at home, at my house, from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will give, get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then who are wicked know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. That's where you're right. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as Father Kevin has said in the beginning of Mass, I'm Father Peter from Kenya, and I have come through the invitation of the Office of the Propagation of Faith in the Archdiocese of Boston on behalf of my Archbishop, Archbishop Anthony from the Archdiocese of Nyeri in Kenya to make an appeal for assistance of a need that we have in our Archdiocese. Allow me to deliver the homily first and then immediately after I will make the appeal. In our country, Kenya, and in Africa in general, when one goes to buy something in the stores, in many instances, you have an opportunity to bargain for the best price. This is how business is done in our country. The seller gives you a very high price, knowing well, that you will definitely bargain for the reasonable price. He says, this thing, this commodity, I'm selling it for $20. My, myself, I say, no, I don't have $20, I have only 10. Are you going to take it? And he says, mm, I'm going to give you a discount of $1. $1. Give me 19. I, said, I, say, I say to him, I have only 10. Take it or not. Now, why can't, you, why can't you add only three or four? So at the end of the day, a commodity that I was supposed to buy for $20, I end up buying for $13. That is how business is done. And when, for example, you visit me in Kenya and they see a white man or a white lady and you want to buy something, something that they can sell for me for $20, they will sell it for you at $50. $50. <laughs> Then I'll tell you, try to bargain, try to bargain, even if you're white. <laughs> and you'll come up to $20 and you'll have made $1 more. More than myself, I could have given him 13, you give him 20, so he mixed seven. In the first reading of today, from the book of Genesis, tells us that this is how God, also God would like us to talk to him, or he wants to talk to us too. On a certain day, says the story, God reveals to Abraham his decision to go to Sodom and Gomorrah to see if what he hears about the weakness of the inhabitants is true. Don't forget, my dear brothers and sisters, Abraham has a nephew in Sodom, Lot, in that, in that city of Sodom, and he is worried and thus starts interceding so that it may be spared for the love of the innocent, the just ones who live there. Abraham addresses himself to, to the Lord 
and talks to him as a friend. His prayer is not a succession of formulas repeated over and over again by heart. It is not of words flowing out of his mouth while his mind and heart are far from it. But it is a sincere and straightforward dialogue with God. He discusses the price, Abraham, as we do in Africa, in our country, when bargaining, he begins with 50. When you get 50 innocent people in Sodom, are you going to destroy the whole city because of destroying together the innocent and those who are not innocent? God says, if I get 50, I'll save the city. What if there is less five? You get 45. Are you going to do the same? No. If I get 45 who are innocent, I will spare the city. And when Abraham saw that God is giving in, he stops moving from five to five. He starts asking for tens. What if there are 30? What if there are 20? What if there are 10? God says, I will not for the sake of those innocent. My dear brothers and sisters, is this the way we talk to God ourselves? Do we address him like a friend? Is this how we open up to him our hearts when we are praying? If we are constant in hearing the, his word and meditating on his gospel while we pray, he will send us the, his light. He will show us the way and the choices we must make in life, and he makes his closeness and protection felt. He grants us his strength. In the ancient times, the religious groups were not characterized only by the truths they believed and the laws they observed, but also by the kind of prayer they used. In today's gospel, Luke tells us that one day the apostles approached Jesus after he had finished praying and asked him to teach them how to pray. The prayer of our Lord, the Our Father, is a synthesis of the whole Christian message. In fact, in the early church, in the early centuries of the church, this prayer was being received by the catechumens directly from the hands of the bishop. Why? Because it was considered as the compendium of the instruction on God and the whole Christian life. Prayer reflects the contents of one faith, one's faith and the continence of God he believes or she believes in. It is not enough, my dear brothers and sisters, to pray. One has to know how to pray. This is why Jesus taught his disciples a prayer that was to be a model of prayer. After presenting the model of Christian prayer, Jesus tells a parable of a man who goes to a friend and insists on having three loaves of bread. This story is to teach us that prayer will obtain results only if it is prolonged not in the sense of time or hours or months, but in its consistency and perseverance. Remember that Jesus, when he was teaching, he gave a parable to about a widow who was going now and then to the unjust judge seeking to get justice. And concluding that parable, Jesus said, pray without ceasing. St. Paul repeats the same message, pray without ceasing. To arrive at the interior acceptance of the will of God and to see the events of our lives with his eyes from above, one must pray and pray without ceasing. In other words, for a long time, like the way Abraham did addressing God from 50, 45, 30, 20, like that, 
and he was saying, let the Lord not get annoyed with me. Allow me to say, to say something again. Jesus, he tells us that we need to pray always. And he says that our prayers are, are responded by God. What we pray for, we get. Christian prayer is always granted. Jesus in today's gospel says, ask and you receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open to you. But is this really, my dear brothers and sisters, our experience? No, sometimes, no. Why? Because the reason is very simple, because we do not know how to pray. We need to ask to be helped to pray, to be taught to pray by Christ, and to be helped by the Holy Spirit to know how to pray. To pray means to come out of the, of the darkness of our thoughts and our passions and be absorbed, absorbed in God. Our eyes can open up and look at the events of our lives differently only after spending time in dialogue with him. Prayer has been effective. It has been granted. Prayer has changed our minds and heart. St. Paul, in today's second reading, he tells us that our transgressions are nailed on the cross. Jesus took our transgressions with him on the cross. In other words, he paid our debt. And therefore, St. Paul encourages us, we who have been baptized, we have died with him and resurrected with him, we need not to fear anymore. Why? Because our prayers, our debt has been paid by Jesus through his blood. Allow me now, my dear brothers and sisters, to make the appeal on behalf of my bishop through the Office of the Propagation of Faith. First, I want, in, on his behalf, to thank the Office of the Propagation of Faith of the Archdiocese of Boston for granting us an opportunity this year to take part in the missionary appeal. I also sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, thank Father Kevin, your pastor, for allowing us to come to preach to you in this endeavor of the missionary appeal. Thirdly, I thank you all for your generosity and spirit to be always ready to support the church in the mission lands in Africa and in the other parts of the world. Originally, we know the work of the church is to preach the gospel, but at the same time, Christ when he was sending his disciples, he said, apart from preaching the gospel, go and heal the sick, go and feed the hungry, go and cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. That is the work of evangelization. After the crisis of COVID, my archbishop, Anthony, identified a need, a very urgent need that needs to be addressed in our society back in our diocese and also this is a need all over the world in our societies. That is the need of the issue of mental health. Many young people in our country, Kenya, have stopped going to school, some of them, because they have abused drugs, alcohol, and they don't see the need of any, need of any formal education. Neither do they see the need of being in contact with God. They don't go to the church to church anymore. Why? Because they have amassed themselves in drugs and alcohol. Therefore, Archbishop Anthony saw that there is a need of starting a rehabilitation center to journey with these people who have become addicts of drugs and alcohol in order to help them to be healed and to guide them to be able to live a normal life. But this rehabilitation center, which he started two years ago, is picking up slowly by slowly. Not fast as we would like. Why? Because we don't have funds. And that's why we have come to you, to help us with your contributions in order to cater for the food, the accommodation, the uh, resources that we need, and also 
expertise, personnel that we need in that rehabilitation center to journey with our brothers and sisters who are in need. Therefore, hear our prayer, hear our request, and extend your generosity to us in order for us to be able to take also part in this other side of evangelization that Christ did and trust to his church. For more information, in the bulletin of this weekend that you have, at the back, the last page, you'll find the whole appeal written by my archbishop, and I've just summarized what we have come to do. May God bless you as you prepare yourselves to help us. Mary, our mother, she is the model of church in prayer. May she intercede for us that we may always find strength through our prayers. Amen. Please stand for our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. Jesus encouraged his followers to ask, seek, and knock, trusting in God's goodness, Let's offer our prayers this day. For the Pilgrim Church on earth, may God help us to readily forgive others and joyfully seek his kingdom. We pray pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all grandparents and elders on World Grandparents and Elders Day, may they be blessed with the health of body and mind as they enrich the lives of so many with their wisdom and experiences and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in grief, may God's abundant love console them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, trusting in God's mercy, may he reward them with everlasting life, especially Nancy Van Camp, Pat Corrigan, members of our Mass Intention Guild, and all our beloved deceased. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For whom our sanctuary candle is lit this week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those needs best spoken in the silence of our hearts. For those needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Loretta Cossette, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you provide generously for your children. Please hear and answer the prayers we offer. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. And there will be a second collection this morning for the propagation of faith. And I just want, on behalf of Father Burton, myself, want to thank you for the generous support that you give to this parish and to those ministries that you support with your generous donations. Thank you. 
Our offertory hymn is number 540, Abba Father, number 540. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice for your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to love like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning, we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you in need of drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also your servant, Loretta Cosette, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with, the, with, the, with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Of mercy on us all, we pray that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who are pleased through through all the ages, you may merry to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever her hand ever At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our first communion hymn is number 503, We Remember, number 503. And we believe that we will. 
every person standing by your side. Give to one another and temples of your love. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate for you. in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. All my being, bless the Lord, bless the holy name of God. All my being, bless the Lord, remembering the goodness of God. in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. God forgives us all our sins, healing those who live in pain, saving us from final death. God fills us with goodness and love. to anger, rich in kindness, loving and forgiving are you. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Couple of announcements. Please help spread the word that it is time to register any incoming first graders for religious education. I don't want to be a killjoy, but it's amazing how fast this summer's going. And before you know it, it'll be Labor Day. So if you know of any first graders uh, to sign, uh, contact the, the parish office to, to sign them up for uh, religious education. And the Christmas Fair, a wonderful event here at St. Mary's Parish is in need of silent auction items. If you have season tickets, a vacation home, or other items you would be willing to donate, not the vacation home, maybe a, a weekend or a week or something. You know, We're not that greedy, I don't think. Uh, and please see the bulletin for more information. One other general announcement, or I should say warning, um, came to my attention that on Thursday, a couple of parishioners had received phishing emails in my name. Um, and uh, as a matter of fact, Father Bert got one himself. And uh, 
So it's a situation where the, the main body of the, the email was, please do not, please do you have some time to help regarding a church task? I'll appreciate a swift correspondence via email so I can explain better. And it says, blessings, Reverend Kevin Hickey. In my emails, I just say, God bless Father Kevin. So right there, it's a get dead giveaway. It's a bogus. But the other thing is the subject line has the name of the person that the email is being sent to plus a question mark. And if you happen to click on that, then another email quickly comes basically saying, well, I'm, the pastor's too busy, but you could help me out by buying some uh, Amazon gift cards to give to the parish. Well, right th there it tells me that this is bogus because I, I would never consider giving my staff gift cards. <laughs> Don't tell them that. Oops, this is, it's on live stream, so I'm in trouble anyways. But anyways, just wanted to let you know. And then I found out to Holly, uh, Rosenberg and Lori Bobensek tried to make me feel better saying that this also happened to Father Matt. So they're pretty devious to finding ways to uh, uh, extract generosity from, from parishioners. So just if you see them, just go ahead and please delete them. I want to wish everybody a wonderful Sunday, uh, a wonderful week as you continue to enjoy the summer weather. As you continue, I'm sure that some of you have many vacations going on. And uh, also, it's a situation that I uh, also want to thank Father Peter for being here this weekend. And he is, speaking of traveling, I hope that he has a safe trip. He's going down to Kentucky. Uh, he's going to visit two of his sisters that work in, in Kentucky for a couple of days before flying back home. So uh, safe travels and safe travels to you all. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Our closing hymn is number 580, In the Day of the Lord, number 580. shine like the dawn of eternal day all creation will rise to dance and sing the glory of the lord and on that day will justice triumph on that day will all be free free from want free from fear free to live shine like the dawn of eternal day all creation will rise to dance and sing the glory of the lord then shall the nations throng together to the mountain of the lord they shall walk in the light of the shine like the dawn of eternal day all creation will rise to dance and sing the glory of